the African Meeting House is one of the oldest African American owned buildings in the country. It's one of the oldest churches in the country. The building was built in 1806. It started out as a church, but it was really a multi-purpose institution, a hub in which the black community could come to either learn or pray or worship or organize. And it really became the heartbeat of Beacon Hill. Beacon Hill is known for its black community. It was historically one of the oldest black communities in Boston. It was the place where you went if you were a free black person or an abolitionist and you wanted to know more about what was going on in the black community, Beacon Hill was the place to be. Beacon Hill is really known for being part of the abolitionist heartbeat. And I say that because so many black abolitionists live there, William Nell, Mariah Stewart, David Walker, Lewis and Harriet Hayden had their home in Beacon Hill. And so it becomes this place where Black people live, but also where Black people are organizing and where they're pushing for school reform and they're pushing for the end of slavery. And the remarkable things they did with the very little that they had is really quite incredible. One of the things that the Black community accomplishes in the Beacon Hill area is school desegregation. I think people think of school segregation as a Southern phenomenon, but really Massachusetts is one of the first states to desegregate its schools. And that's because of the activism of the Black people that lived there and said, we don't want our children walking for miles to other schools when they can attend schools right here in the community. And that battle was fought during the 19th century. I think a common myth is that everyone in the North was an abolitionist and nothing could be further from the truth. Black abolitionists had a two-fold mission. The first was the abolition of slavery. The second was equality. And they really saw those things going hand in hand. You could not have abolition without equality. You couldn't have equality without abolition. And while a lot of white people could get on board with abolition, not a lot of white people supported equality. There are very few white people at the time that really want an end to this institution that see it as wrong and also see black people as worthy of these rights of life and liberty in the pursuit of happiness. William Lloyd Garrison was a famous white abolitionist from Boston who I think really becomes known as the father of the abolitionist movement. And I think that's incorrect. Don't get me wrong. William Lloyd Garrison does a lot of great things. He is definitely a champion for abolitionist rights. There is no question about that. But I think oftentimes we forget that black abolitionists were the first abolitionists. No one needed to tell black people that slavery was wrong or that slavery was evil. They knew that and they had been advocating for the end of slavery since its inception. And so William Lloyd Garrison really is an ally more than anything else, but I think oftentimes our history books have put him way too much at the center and not given enough attention to Black abolitionists, particularly who are living in Boston, that were doing this work as well. I think there is a new wave of scholarship, I like to think my work is included in that, that is aimed at trying to recenter the role of Black people and take people that have historically been pushed to the margins and again put them at the center. You get these very limited narrow stories of history that don't offer complexity, that don't give the full picture of the landscape. We need to make sure that these voices have volume and that they have value and that people understand why these people mattered and the work that they did. I think Boston could definitely do a better job of highlighting this history. I think that's why it's so important that people come to the Museum of African American History, that they visit us, that they see the exhibits that we have going on. The Black Heritage Tour is a wonderful opportunity to walk through the streets of Boston and really not just see Boston, but to have an idea of what it meant to live in a space, in a place that really circulated around freedom and liberty and abolition. And I think it's so important to know that we don't just have this history as a part of us. We live in it. We live our lives in it and around it. And when you know that, it feels even more special to be a part of that space.